Because the Earth is a really big ball with a radius of about 4,000 miles, that means the surface of the ball drops away from a horizontal line of sight at a rate of about 8 inches times the distance in miles squared. What? That can't be right! On rare occasions, we get to witness moments of sheer genius. This is not one of those moments. <laughs> I've been trying to work out um, what 8 inches per mile actually means to people. I'll tell you what it should mean. That figure on the left is from Walter Bissell, and the one on the right is from a surveying textbook. The green line in the figure on the left is the curved surface of the Earth. That's shown as the level line on the right figure. The blue line is a horizontal line of sight. I've included a red line on that figure on the right. Distance is simply the distance from the observer to the point of interest. And that results in a drop of the level surface from that horizontal line of sight. Instead of a lot of words, let's write an equation. Let's write it this way. H is equal to 8d squared. So H, the drop, is equal to 8 times the distance in miles squared. That's very simple. In fact, it's not going to get any easier than that. How am I doing so far? So what does it mean? Well, I don't do fantasy math, so to me, it's just a number. But I mean, easily represented by the fact that if you have, um, well, let me get Jesse Kozlowski. Here we go. The level surface drops away, drops down from the horizontal plane at a rate of eight inches times the distance in miles squared. And that's what Jesse Kozlowski said. So the relationship of uh, something dropping down from horizontal. Everybody obviously knows what horizontal is. Um, this relationship of this formula, eight inches uh, times the distance in miles squared. Well, the distance would be a mile. Hold on there, Hot Rod. Distance is a variable. It could be a mile, but it could also be a fraction of a mile. It could be two miles. It could be 10 miles or 100 miles. The amount of drop is going to vary depending on what the distance is. It's not just a mile. It can be anything you need it to be. And then the drop down, drop away, would be the eight inches. That's only true if the distance is exactly a mile. If you have a different distance, you've got a different drop. I really don't think you're understanding this. So it gives you most of the stuff that you need to know the basics of this formula. Most of the stuff? It's an equation that squares a single variable and multiplies it by a constant. What information do you imagine is missing? And obviously, you relate it to reality um, within these measurements. One mile and eight inches. Well, one mile, obviously, horizontal distance. Eight inches, drop, vertical distance. Quite simply... Jesse Kozlowski says one of them drops away from the other by eight inches. So that's measurable. Both the eight inches and the one mile, because you could definitely do that. You could go one mile uh, and mark that thing, and then you could put a ruler and say eight inches. You definitely can do it, Bev. In fact, you did it. That's you standing on the beach at Southport, about a thousand feet away from an auto level. That's Blackpool Tower, 13 miles away in the distance. Now we're looking through the atmosphere, so eight inches per mile squared has to be adjusted for atmospheric refraction. Instead of eight inches, it ends up being about 6.84 inches. 13 squared times 6.84 inches divided by 12 to get feet 
is 96.3 feet. Look at where the crosshair lines are on Blackpool Tower. That's about 100 feet above sea level. Your auto level is just a few feet above sea level. This is exactly the effect that formula describes. Am I wrong? Is that what the formula is? Is that how we use the formula? In reality, it's a mathematical formula. Is it used anywhere in reality? I mean, we know it's used in this arena. Uh, well, I mean... Thrown out there, anyway. Eight inches per, per mile squared. It's a quadratic. Yeah, I know. You know, the square... Adds right, but is it... You you said is is it is it used in reality right is it used in reality? I don't know. Do surveyors use that? Is that something surveyors use? Eight inches per mile squared. Surveyors absolutely use it. This is from a 1966 copy of Davis Foot and Kelly's textbook on surveying theory and practice. The combined effect of earth curvature and atmospheric refraction is given by the expression H prime. That's the drop equals 0.57 K squared. They use K for distance in miles. This returns an answer in feet, not inches. 0.57 feet is 6.84 inches. That's where I got that from. The effect of Earth's curvature alone is about 0.66 K squared. 0.66 feet is 8 inches. So it says exactly the same thing. 8 inches times the distance in miles squared. It's really quite easy to figure out where these numbers come from. If we consider just the geometric drop, no refraction effects, and we consider the radius of the Earth to be 3958.8 miles, we can make a couple of assumptions, and these are the assumptions. Over a short distance, the horizontal distance the distance from C to D in the diagram would be about the same as the arc length over the surface. In other words, the distance from B to D. And if we make the assumption over short distances that the drop H is essentially perpendicular to the arc BD, then drop H has to be R minus R prime. But if you look at R prime in my diagram, that's one leg of that blue triangle. That means that r prime has got to be equal to the square root of r squared minus d squared. That's just Pythagoras. When we plug those numbers in, we end up with 8.0024 inches. And as long as the distances are less than about 500 miles, the error in this approximation is less than one-tenth of one percent. Of course, when we're looking through an atmosphere, there is refraction. And refraction causes the light to bend down. That means that objects you see in the distance appear to be a little bit higher than they actually are. It has the effect as if the Earth had a larger radius. Now a frequently used number is 7 over 6 r. So if we take the actual radius of the Earth, 3958.8 times 7 divided by 6, you end up with 4618.6. And plugging that number in, we find the drop is going to be 6.859 inches times the distance in miles squared. That's 0.57 feet, and that's exactly what the textbook said. Now, you can certainly go through this same formula every time, and instead of using one mile for D, you can put any distance you want to in the formula. But that's identically equal to taking the distance you're interested in, in miles, squaring it, and multiplying that by 6.859 inches. That will give you the drop in inches, or multiply by 0.57 feet, and you get the drop in feet. It's pretty straightforward. Let's see if these guys understand it. These guys are going over a video by a friend of mine named Petey. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Petey set up a model in GeoGebra so that he could measure the geometric drop over whatever distance he wanted to select. And the tri-thinkers are trying to make sense out of it. You might want to get your oven mitts ready.
It's hiding. Next, I want to write the line that will measure the drop at B from the plane that's tangent at A. I'm basically asking GeoGebra to find the... So he's doing the drop from the plane the horizontal, like Jesse Kozlowski says, the drop, the measured drop, perpendicular to the plane. Closest point in that plane to point B, and then retain that distance in inches. Out of interest, I also want to measure the drop at point C from the plane that's tangent at B. And it shouldn't come as any surprise that this distance is the same as the previous result. Lastly, we want to get the drop over the full mile, so that's the distance from the plane that's tangent at A to point C. And we get a tad over 8 inches. Let's say it's, let's say it's 2 inches mile. over a half. Right, see what he's done there, right? 8 inches. Uh, mm -hmm. Now he's forgotten about closing your loop. He forgot about closing his loop. Do you think he's doing a land survey, or are you just making random remarks now? One of the um, usual things whenever you're doing a check for these elevation marks, you're going from A, transposing the uh, benchmark at A, to B. It's a computer program. He's not in the field running a level loop with an auto level. Are you sure you took a course in surveying? Yes. Right, but then you have to return back to A to close the loop to make, Correct, sure, to make sure that all of your calculations and your measurements have all yes. added up together. You've not made it a mistake. Uh, he forgets about that. There's a reason PT forgets about that. Um, I don't think it's worth going into. You don't think it's worth going into because there is nothing to go into. You're just making up stuff to try to discredit Petey. That's what's really happening. But, you know, have a word with Petey. Ask Maybe it's not question. really practical then. Perhaps it's just not practical. practical for because in practicality, right, you would have to do that. Close your loop. Close yeah, loop. Yeah. 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 Oh, I get it. We're listening to the two finalists in the How Stupid Can You Be Championship round. Okay, so back to the again. Half mile. Well, if you add those two together, you end up with four inches. But if you start from one point and go the whole mile, you have eight inches. So good, that's a good point, whoever said that. I think it might have been me. Uh-oh. Bev's trying to pull into the lead here. He said something incredibly stupid, and he's so proud of it, I'll bet he plays it again. Right, yeah. so um, here we go. We've got uh, from A to B to C. Wait, two inches mile. over a half mile. So two inches over the first half mile. And that's the same for uh, either of these, right? He, could leave, he should have left that one in there. Well, if you add those two to C, another two. For the other half mile. Mm -hmm. Together you end up with four inches. Four inches, yeah. Now this one here from A to B should stay there because that doesn't change. That stays at two, right? Because the half, it's still the half distance for the full thing. But if you start from one, see the eight inches. One point and go the whole mile, you have eight inches. Eight inches. Eight inches. So there's a difference of four inches, isn't there? A difference of four inches, isn't there? Between four and eight. Two that twos. would be a difference of four. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's right there, right? Now, um, uh, did PT do that maths right? Or did I do that maths right? Does two twos add up to four? And, um, yeah. Four isn't eight. And this Bob is what I was pointing no. out. This is this is literally what I was pointing out. That, that you know, there's a difference of four. Now, what? How did that happen? Where did it come from? Who knows? Right about now, you're saying to yourself, "Come on, Blue. There's no way this guy could be that stupid." Well, don't sell him short. Uh, the quarter mile would be measurable too. Yeah, what? Well, a quarter times a quarter is a sixteenth, 
times that by 8, that's 8 over 16 or a half, so half an inch. Let's give Yeah, half an inch. A quarter of two? Who'd have thunk that? Isn't that brilliant the way that they do that? See the way he did that? It might be giving yeah, him a bit of a disservice. He might have <clears throat> been doing that like a flat earther. He might have just divided yeah, it by four because it it's quadratic. Have, yeah. Yeah, he might have just mm -hmm. assume because it's a quadratic that he could divide it by yep. four. Quadratic doesn't mean four for crying out loud. Quadratic is a square function. It comes from Latin meaning square. It's a polynomial expression where the highest order term is a square term. What's wrong with you guys? Yep. But we might be he doing the right answer, though, right? He got the right answer, though, right? He did get the right answer. Yep. 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 Give it a go. Look. Ooh. Half an inch. Half an inch. I mean, in a mile, you've got eight inches, but what have you got at 100 meters? 200 meters? You know, measurable distances. What have you got? He's got it there. 0.7848 millimeters. I mean, we've got that. We have, we've got that. Because you'd only end up with, like, let's say you get one millimeter drop over 100 meters. Um, well, 16 of them would give you 16 millimeters. That's not eight inches. Like, you've, you're missing a fair bit there, aren't you? You're not, you're not even really at an inch. <laughs> The, I'm, I'm not with him on that because 16 millimeters isn't an inch, is it? It's like 25 no. millimeters in an inch. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you were to go 16, 100 meters, I mean, it's 1,609 meters is a mile metric. So if you go 16, 100 meters, you've gone 1,600 meters. And you've only dropped, according to the maths, 16 millimetres. We can work out the same formula using kilometres and centimetres. If we do that, we find out that level drops away from horizontal at the rate of 7.848 centimetres times the distance in kilometres squared. Now, a mile is actually 1609 Point two six meters. That's one point six zero nine two six kilometers. Square that number times seven point eight four eight, and you get twenty point three two four centimeters. Convert that to inches, and it's exactly eight inches. You can't add the drops together like you're trying to do. That is not how this works. That's not eight inches. And uh, so Petey thinks that's funny somehow. He's put a funny laughing clip in there. I don't know what it was for. Oh, believe me, just about everybody watching this knows what Petey was laughing at. You know, you would think by now these guys would have noticed that little key on their pocket calculator and they would have pushed it just to see what it did. Let me give you a hint. It neither multiplies or nor does it divide by four. Remember, fellas, when we say how stupid can you be, that isn't a challenge. It's a question. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like the video, you can say so by pushing that little button down there. Drop by Petey's channel and watch some of his stuff. I'm sure he would appreciate that. The link is in the description. And with that, We'll see you guys on the next one.